So, this is my lens journey, what I've learned, where I'm at, and how it's making me think about whether or not I should even keep this camera. So anyway, as has been well documented on my page, or my channel, or whatever you want to call it here at YouTube, um, I have gone through quite the lens journey where I bought a bunch of lenses on uh, eBay. I got them really cheap, but I got great lenses. And by the way, every one that I got showed up in perfect condition um, for my Sony a6400 camera, which I'm using right now. And so, you know, I've been really wanting to experiment with focal lengths and also with aperture, you know, to see how that's going to help me creatively with my work, um, you know, how I want to um, isolate uh, subject, how I want to mess with blurry background, how, whether or not I deal with low light a lot, um, and also stabilization and what, you know, how important that really is in the camera and in the lens. Um, I wasn't quite sure about that, you know. And, you know, if you watch all the videos on YouTube, you see so many different opinions about that, it's ridiculous. So, and every one of them makes sense. And everybody who gives the opinion is like this incredible filmmaker. And so it's hard to really decide until you do it for yourself. So, I got a Samyang uh, 12mm f2, which is what I'm using right now, and which is a lens that I absolutely love. And actually, everything I leave in this video will have been shot on this lens. So, you get an idea of what you can do with it and how I use it. And I use clear image zoom, so I can get it between 12 and 18, millim 18 millimeters, actually, which is the equivalent of 18 and 27 on a full frame camera. The A6400 is a crop sensor camera. So, I got the Samyang. I had a Viltrox 23 millimeter f1.4. I had a Sony uh, 35 millimeter f1.8. Sony 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter f1.8. Sorry, it's really cold, so my mouth is ceasing to work. Um, I had the 16 to 50 kit lens that came with this camera, which I also bought on eBay, by the way. I had the Sony 18 to 105 uh, f4 which I loved and I just recently sold and now I miss. Um, and I have the Sony 55 to 210, which has an aperture from, I think, 4.5 to 6.3 or something like that. So anyway, those are the lenses that I've had. And so what I have now is I decided that I find myself shooting with primes all the time. So I kept this. I kept the Sony 35mm f1.8 and I kept the uh, 55 to 210. Oh, and how can I forget? I have the Sigma, Sigma 16mm f1.4, which is an incredible, off the charts, sharp, great lens. So, I find myself mainly using the Sigma 16mm and the Sony 35mm for almost everything that I'm doing. And because of clear image zoom, in the Sony a6400, I really kind of have like two zoom lenses, you know, 16 to 24 and 35 to like 52 with those two lenses that I kept. And I can't really think of any scenario in the kind of work that I do where I would need anything more than that, you know? I guess the only disadvantage would be that I don't want to switch lenses ever, you know? And I can't really, you know, the way that I work making narrative film or documentary, I'm not really like a run and gun shooter. I can't imagine how that would make me feel like I need anything else, you know? I'm gonna lean on the car, my shoulder's getting a little tired. So anyway, here's what's happening with me. Um, I have a Weeble S gimbal, but I find that I don't really, I'm not wanting to use it a lot because I don't really like that perfectly smooth looking video all the time you know i mean i just i just finished a feature film on my phone okay so my lg uh lg v40 has basically a 27 millimeter focal length that's what you're looking at when you look through it now you can zoom with it you know if you just pinch the screen but it's you know it's digital zoom and it looks like shit. 
and so I hardly ever use it. I used it maybe on two shots in the entire film, and it's a two hour and eight minute film. So I only had one focal length the whole time. And I'm telling you, I never felt like I needed anything else, you know? I just, I learned how to use one focal length. If I needed to get more in the frame, I moved further away. If I wanted to get close up, I shot close. The LG V40 shoots really well close up. It's, you know, it's almost like a, a macro lens. So, you know, like a lot of cell phones, you can get really close. And so, huh, you know, I'm feeling like I can not get my work done with one lens. You know, like I don't need more than one lens as long as it's relatively flexible, probably like a 24 millimeter, right? Which is really, really wide enough for pretty much everything. But also you can do portrait kind of stuff with it. You could do close stuff like this. I mean, look, I'm, I'm using a 12 millimeter right now which is an 18 millimeter um, equivalent, and I'm vlogging with it, and I can get pretty close, you know? I mean, it's a manual lens, so with this particular lens, I have to be careful and make sure that I stay in focus. But, you know, I could get the Samyang autofocus if I want, and then I could have autofocus and not worry about it, but I also find that I use manual focus 90% of the time. And so, you know, after watching all these, you know, like thousands and thousands, thousands of uh, YouTube videos that I've been watching and what I've learned about the kind of filmmaker that I am from making a feature length film and now in the midst of shooting a documentary and getting ready to shoot another documentary and also working on my second film, which I'm going to actually shoot on a camera this time, probably this camera, probably, I'll get to that in a second, I'm learning that I want to do the kind of work, okay, there are a couple of filmmakers on YouTube, filmmakers on YouTube that have really, really inspired me a lot, okay? And I'm positive neither of them are watching this, but Mark Bone is a documentary filmmaker. Check him out, because that boy is a genius. I mean, he's a, he's a beast of a filmmaker, and he does all of his work, well, I don't want to say all of his work, but he seems to do most of his work handheld. And so, you know, there's a lot of shaky kind of stuff. And, you know, he, I just watched two of his documentaries today, actually. No Country is an Island and Rescati. Um, you should check them out. They're incredible. And there's a lot of stuff in there where there's a lot of movement, you know, and it's really kind of exciting and it, it fits the work, you know, it fits the work. And so I love that. And so I want to do most of my work handheld, but I also get a lot of that micro jitter kind of stuff like this, you know, and that's no good. And that's because this camera, the A6400 is so light, it's hard to really keep it completely stable all the time. Like I need to weigh it down. I need to maybe put it in a cage, add a top handle, um, you know, maybe add a monitor or something like that. But the thing is, I don't really want to do all of that, you know? And by the way, what I was alluding to before about the 18 105 lens that I just sold, the thing that I really loved about that lens is I got really great shots with that lens because it was by far my heaviest lens. And so it actually made my camera more stable. Thing is, it was F4, so I found that the minute the sun went down, that lens was useless. You know, like, I could only really use it in perfect lighting situations. And so it just seemed too limiting to me. You know, in the F4, I mean, even though I got pretty good blurry background with it, I couldn't really do what I wanted to do with it all the time like I can with the 35 millimeter f1.8 or even with this lens or certainly with the Sigma which is f1.4 and so I sold it but I loved the way it looked you know I loved the way things look when I shot with it and I loved that it was heavy it seemed to stabilize my camera and so Mark Bone makes me feel like I want to do everything handheld but then then there's this guy named Brandon Lee Brandon Lee, genius off the charts, okay? But he is like gimbal man. Like he is like Superman with gimbals. I mean, he, he does work that is just astounding. Everything that he does, everything that, like check him out. Brandon Lee, that's L-I. <clears throat> check him out on YouTube and you will see he is amazing. He's got some short films, but he has a lot of teaching kind of stuff up on YouTube and I've learned so much from that guy. Um, he makes me realize I want to shoot with a gimbal a lot too, you know, or maybe not a lot, but enough where I wanted to own one and I wanted to at least have that flexibility to get that kind of smooth shot if I really wanted to get it, you know, and also 
it helps with getting you know low shots where you're down on the ground and so Brandon Lee inspired me in many many ways as well so I'm kind of in between handheld and using a gimbal which is a stabilizer by the way if, if you don't know what I'm talking about and so you know I realize that it's all about the story you know what I mean like any filmmaker any playwright any person who does any kind of creative work poets musicians anybody knows that it's all about the story you know whether it's a linear story an obvious story a poetic you know metaphorical kind of story there's got to be something compelling about what you're doing to keep people involved but if we have these creative tools to use we want to we want to master them so that it helps us to tell the story in the best way that we possibly can you know so i've learned that I can do anything I want to do with one lens. I mean, I could just live with the with the Sigma 16 millimeter, which is a 24 millimeter equivalent, and I could be fine with that. But I do, I am thankful that I have the flexibility to have the Sigma and my Sony 35 millimeter. So I have a pretty good focal range, and I have clear image zoom on this camera, which allows me to zoom one and a half times uh, from what the camera from what that lens is so in other words my Sony 35 millimeter I can make it a 52 millimeter the Sigma 16 I can make it a 24 I'm happy to have that flexibility what I'm wondering is should I even keep this camera because the Sony a6400 does not have stability in body stabilization IBIS and so I'm thinking of either upgrading to a full frame camera this year which I would probably get the Sony a7 IV, which is a lot more money than this camera, but I would probably just get one lens for it. I'd, get, I'd sell everything, my camera, all my lenses, and I would probably have enough money to buy that camera, and then I'd have to invest in another lens, and I would have in-body stabilization, and I'd make sure I would have it on both the lens and the camera. But I love this camera. I love the way the content looks that comes out of it. And also a proper cinema camera, like a RED or a Komodo or something like that, they don't have in-body stabilization. And most vintage lenses, you know, most of those lenses that you, you know, that were shot on your favorite movies over the years, you know, classic films did not have stabilization, you know? Cinematographers, filmmakers have used ways, you know, have figured out ways to stabilize their shots for a long long time you know but I guess the point is that now we've evolved we've made it easier for ourselves and we can get shots much easier than anybody was able to do in the past and so I have spoken a few times about how I like the fact that I've been shooting like with my Viltrox that I sold that had no stabilization this lens right here the Samyang um, my Sigma has no stabilization and this camera I've appreciated that I've had to learn without any stabilization and I've had to figure out how to make it look pretty good right but I've come to the realization that why work so hard if I don't have to so I think in the future I'm gonna you know really work on making sure I have lenses that have stabilization and I really do think that I'm gonna wind up upgrading my camera um, whether it be the a6600 if I want to stay with the crop sensor camera and just keep my lenses which is a distinct possibility because it's basically getting this camera just with stabilization and a bigger battery so I won't have to be changing batteries all the time or I'll upgrade to a full frame camera Sony a7 IV maybe the a7s3 and have in-body stabilization and it'll make it easier for me so anyway that's where I'm at with my lens journey. I bought all these lenses on eBay. I spent literally less than $1,000 for all the lenses combined. I actually made more money selling them than I paid for them on eBay, which is pretty cool, pretty funny. And now I've pared down. I have basically three lenses because I don't really use the 55 to 210. I just realized I can't really sell it. It's got a little crack on the lens. I got it for 100 bucks. You can't see it. You know, when you shoot, you can't see anything, but nobody's gonna buy it from me if they see that. So anyway, I basically have three lenses. I have the Samyang, I have the Sigma 16 millimeter, and I have the Sony 35 millimeter, and that's it. And so, I'm um, figuring out what my next move is gonna be. And 
I feel like I'm going to be able to make an informed decision because I did it myself. I got the experience myself. I bought all these lenses. I got this camera. I have made a lot of videos with everything. I've now been working on a documentary and I feel like now I can make better informed decisions moving forward and not have to rely upon the 97,000 comments that I see underneath the 957,000 videos that I see that have educated me and have given me so much over the past couple of years. I appreciate all of it and um, I'm really grateful with the knowledge that I've uh, gotten over the past couple of years and I look forward to creating some amazing stories moving forward. Um, so that's it for today. My lens journey, my camera journey. I'm out here in Pleasant Valley, New York. I have no idea really where I am, where that is. I know it's somewhat close to Poughkeepsie where I live, but I'm just kind of floating around today. I love it around here, it's pretty. Do I miss New York City? Yes, but am I gonna move back? No, probably, but I love it here. I can run in beautiful places here. You can see there's like little streams all over the place and you know, I'm by the Hudson River and I can get to the mountains and New Paltz and it's just beautiful up here, so it's nice. So anyway, that's it. Hope you're well. Hope everybody you love is well. Really be careful out there. It is fucking crazy right now. And um, I'll see you on the next one. Take care of yourselves and take care of one another. Peace. <laughs>